Good evening, everybody. My name is Jeroen Janssen, I'm from Holland, and um, I'd like to talk to you about Louden guitars. And um, Louden guitars are Northern Irish uh, built guitars by George Louden and his team. And um, they are loved and praised and cherished and worshipped throughout uh, the whole range of acoustic guitar players. Everybody loves a loud guitar. And even a few I know, they uh, say that they're not for them because, you know, it's, they don't doesn't match their playing style or whatever. They still regret that because they love these guitars so much, but it's just not for them. I love them too, absolutely. Uh, although this video is about, um, are these guitars perfect in every sense? Um, is every aspect of this guitar uh, perfect and uh, I don't think that it is and that's why I make this video just to balance out a bit of all the praise and, and glory um, because it's a man-made product right and man-made products are subject to uh, flaws that's what it is um, I don't want to insult anyone I don't want to be brutal or a, a bastard about that I just want to point out my personal findings on these guitars. I own two of them. I am a big Loudon fan and I use them all the time. This is an F25, which is a great guitar. And I also recently bought a S35, which is this one. And it's a great guitar in every way. It's a fantastic guitar. But are these guitars perfect? No, they're not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, this is from my perspective, my personal thoughts on this. Um, you know, these guitars are great, as I said, and I don't want to pin it down on a certain model or whatever. It's just an average, a global thing, what I think about these guitars. First and foremost, a downside to me is the price. Is it a downside? Maybe not. I mean, as long as people are willing to pay that kind of money for a guitar, I think it's legitimate to charge these guitars uh, as they do. But it's a big, it's a big pile of cash you have to put down to obtain a guitar like this. And it's so that makes it not for everyone. And that's a bit of a well, the, you could regard that as a downside. But having that out of the way. Um, guitar wise, I think there are a few things I um, have my doubts about. And the first thing I'd like to mention is the lack of bridge pins. These guitars have no bridge pins. The string goes from the back uh, over the saddle. The downside of that for me is that you cannot take off these strings um, without putting a new set on it. So if you want to change the battery, or if you've got to uh, adjust the saddle, whatever, um, you have to put a new set of strings on it all the time. And especially when you have to adjust the saddle, when your action is too high, too, too high or you have to ad adapt it to the piezo or whatever, it's trial and error. So you have to file it down and put it in and put strings on it and try if it's good enough. If it's not good enough, you have to do it again. And that's how you maintain the right position. But if you cannot use the same strings all the time, it's a bit of a struggle to get these saddle pieces out, uh, out from underneath the strings without taking these strings off. So that's a bit of a downside for me. And using pins, I mean, it looks great and it works for what it is, but um, pins work also. It's not better than pins. I mean, they've been building guitars with pins for so long and they still do. Uh, it works perfectly well. And having said that also, I think when you use pins, I think the pressure on the nuts or on the saddle is a bit higher because the, the, the angle of the string beyond the saddle is steeper with pins. <coughs> so in that way, maybe the pressure is, is better. Um, for what it's worth but i think that's a downside another downside is the saddles itself it's a split saddle construction um and that's officially for intonation 
um, purposes. And it works absolutely because these guitars are very good uh, to put in tune and to stay in tune. And that's due to compensated saddle. Uh, does a split saddle is necessary? No. I also own a Lakewood and a lot of other brands have one saddle which is compensated but still one saddle and works perfectly fine as well. So there is no real need for a split saddle rather than it looks great and it's different. The downside is, especially when it, there's a piezo underneath, um, you have to, these saddles has to be completely flat with no uh, rumble or anything underneath. It has to com be completely flat in order to maintain the proper output balance of, of every string. Having two pieces makes that a little bit harder to achieve. So that's, you know, I'd, I'd rather have bridge pins and a one piece saddle for my personal opinion. Last thing I noticed was um, that a lot of these guitars come with, and that's not just this brand, that's uh, a lot of other brands as well, come with an end pin, a wooden end pin, for aesthetic reasons, I suppose, because I cannot think of another reason to put there an end pin, uh, other than that you might use it to put your strap on, but nobody does that because they're not reliable for that purpose. Everybody um, puts on a, a locking uh, strap lock button. So if you have a guitar with an end pin, you have to pull it out in order to, you know, to put the button for the strap lock in. But the hole of the end pin is a lot bigger in, di in diameter than a screw of the strap lock button. So you have to use that hole for something else because you can't put them both on it because there's no room. It's, it's a lot of fiddly. And if you want to have an output, because you have a, a, an amplified uh, system in it, an amplifying system in it, and there is, a, there is in the middle, there is this end pin, and you've got your button here, and you have, you know, it's a lot of, it's pointless. End pin buttons, these wooden end pin buttons are really pointless. I had the benefit of um, ordering this guitar because it wasn't in stock, so they had to make it. Um, so I, I, I made contact with Loudon and said, well, if you're making it, can you please not put an end pin in it? And if you put my um, amplifying system in it, can you put the output a bit, me a bit more to the back of the guitar so that I have more room to use my strap, my strap lock buttons? So they did. So in that case, it's a custom made, <laughs> it's a custom made guitar. It's my signature model, and pinless guitar. So, but that's a more of a general acoustic guitar thing. But basically, the downsides for me for a Loudon guitar are the lack of bridge pins and the split saddle. Um, you know, once you you have to know that if you take off your strings, put a new battery in it. If you make that a rule you can't go wrong and then it's fine and as as long as you're fine with with the uh with the piezo with the balance in output of every string if that's sorted out and your action is is perfect for you then it's fine then it's great you know you can't ask for anything more but if not if you have to adapt or adjust your saddle height for whatever reason or you have to change the battery while the strings are still you know not ready to re be replaced yet you have a problem because you have to replace the strings or you have to fiddle a lot to get these saddles away from underneath the strings so if there is anything bad to say about that about loud and guitars that's probably it and i just wanted to point that out that's all but other than that everything you hear on the internet on, of people who have played these guitars, they are fantastic, absolutely great. So that's it, thank you for watching and goodbye.